In this video, I'm going to describe some of the common carbohydrate digestive enzymes and their role in human digestion. As we've discussed before, carbohydrates can come in the form of monosaccharides, which do not need to be digested because they can contain no glycosidic bonds. This includes glucose, fructose, and galactose. Carbohydrates that are digestible, such as the disaccharides sucrose and maltose and the polysaccharides starch, these require digestive enzymes that our bodies can make. And then there's carbohydrates that are non-digestible, such as fibers and some diet or oligosaccharides. These are not digestible because we do not have the enzymes that can break these glycosidic bonds, and therefore they pass through our small intestine, past our microbiota, and into our stool. In this video, I'm going to focus on the digestible carbohydrates and the enzymes that perform these functions. We've discussed several of these carbohydrates in prior units. For carbohydrates to be able to be absorbed into our bodies, they must be broken down into their constituent monosaccharide subunits, glucose, galactose, or fructose. So these carbohydrates, which is a combination of polysaccharides and disaccharides, contain at least one glycosidic bond. These glycosidic bonds need to be broken to release the individual monosaccharide units. It's important to remember that the enzymes that break these bonds are specific to the glycosidic linkages, both the monosaccharides that comprise them and the shape of the bond, whether they're alpha or beta, and whether they're an alpha 1,4 or an alpha 1,6. In the case of disaccharides, one step is needed. There's one glycosidic bond, and that glycosidic bond is broken down by specific enzymes, such as maltase for maltose and sucrase for sucrose. Shown below, you can see sucrase, which is present on the brush border of the small intestine, can break the glycosidic bond in sucrose, releasing glucose and fructose. These monosaccharides are then able to be absorbed uh, and used by our bodies. In the case of polysaccharides, such as amylose, it's a little more complicated. Remember, amylose is a series of alpha-1,4 glucose linkages. We have a set of enzymes called alpha amylases. We have a salivary alpha amylase and a pancreatic alpha amylase. So this digestion starts in the mouth, but then continues in the small intestine. This enzyme is specific to the alpha 1,4 glucose bonds that comprise amylase, amylose. So alpha amylase is gonna take a long chain of amylose and start breaking it down into smaller and smaller pieces as shown in the diagram below. Eventually, we're gonna be left with glucose units that are combined into dimers or trimers, it's called maltose or maltotriose. Again, these contain alpha-1,4 glucose linkages. These smaller uh, disaccharides and trisaccharides are not able to be broken down by alpha amylase. So this now requires maltase, which can break the alpha-1,4 bond between two glucoses to release free glucose and allow glucose to be absorbed. In the case of branched polysaccharides, such as amylopectin or glycogen, there's another complicating step. Remember, these polysaccharides contain not just alpha-1,4 linkages between glucose, but also alpha-1,6 linkages, which comprise the branch points of these polysaccharides. That means when we engage alpha amylase, it'll continue to break the carbohydrate down into smaller pieces, just like before, but those smaller pieces are now still gonna have the alpha-1,6 linkages left over. That means as alpha amylase completes its work, we're gonna be left with a series of maltose, isomaltose and maltotriose. The key addition here being isomaltose. That's a sugar which has an alpha 1,6 linkage between two GLOCU subunits. In order to break that down to completion, we now need to engage both maltase and isomaltase to break both down both maltose and isomaltose to their constituent glucose subunits. Again, once broken down into the monosaccharide glucose, those units can be absorbed and used by our bodies. Shown here is a summary of some of the carbohydrates, their glucose units, and the digestive enzymes that are required to break those carbohydrates down to completion. So what happens if the digestion is incomplete? Well, in that case, the sugars cannot be absorbed. Disaccharides, trisaccharides, and polysaccharides are not absorbable by human bodies. This means that those sugars that are not completely digested are passed along from the small intestine to the large intestine. There, they're gonna interact with our gut microbiota, where they may or may not be fermented depending on the types of bacteria that are in our gut. If they're not fermented any further, they will be excreted as feces. 